Thursday's Orioles spring training game really did feel like the future. Grayson Rodriguez got the start on the mound and Adley Rutschman was behind the dish. And Rodriguez pitched very, very well. We'll talk about him, plus some updates on D.L. Hall and some other pitchers coming up on this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. You are Locked On Orioles, your daily Baltimore Orioles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Orioles fans. Today is Friday, March 3rd, 2023, and welcome back in to the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Connor Newcomb. And coming up on today's episode, we got a little bit of Orioles pitching notes to get to here today. As Grayson Rodriguez made his spring training debut, and he was impressive on Thursday. We'll get to what made him look so good. Then we'll talk about D.L. Hall. We did get an injury update on Hall on Thursday as well, and why it's making the potential for him being on the opening day roster look a little worse after that update. And then a couple other things on Spencer Watkins, Joey Crable, Andrew Politti and others as well. But that's all coming up on this episode of the Locked on Orioles podcast, which is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. And before we do jump in, just want to thank you once again for making Locked on Orioles your first listen of the day. We're free and available on all podcast listening platforms. We're also here on YouTube. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Locked on Orioles YouTube channel. And remember, you can be entered to win the Orioles Hawaiian shirt. This is the last day to enter. Here on Friday by midnight, you have to do two things to enter the drawing to win the Orioles never before worn. Hawaiian shirt. Two things you got to do. Number one, you got to subscribe to the Locked On Orioles podcast on YouTube. Number two, you got to leave a comment on either this episode, this video, or any video this week describing either your favorite Orioles spring training memory or just your favorite thing about spring training. And you will be entered to win the Orioles Hawaiian shirt. I'll do the drawing this weekend and we'll announce the winner on Monday's episode. So make sure you subscribe on YouTube to get some great content all season and maybe get your hands on an Orioles Hawaiian shirt. And if you're subscribed, we're going to do giveaways throughout the season. So stick around for those as well. But let's jump right into the big news of the day on Thursday. And it was that Grayson Rodriguez made his big league spring training debut in 2023, getting the start in the Orioles spring training game in Lakeland against the Detroit Tigers on Thursday afternoon. And thanks to John Angelos and the ownership group of Bally Sports in Detroit as well, this game was not televised by either network. And the Orioles radio network wasn't even there to broadcast on the radio either. There was a Tigers radio broadcast for this game. That was it. With Grayson Rodriguez on the mound and Adley Rutschman behind the plate to start this one. And oh, by the way, Adley Rutschman also homered in this game, had a couple of hits. We didn't get to see any of it because it wasn't being broadcasted because Masson is broadcasting a grand total of four spring training games this year. But past that, Grayson Rodriguez, according to the Tigers radio broadcasters, according to the Orioles beat writers who were in the ballpark, and according to the stats, especially on Baseball Savant and StatCast, he was throwing it well on Thursday afternoon. Rodriguez goes two scoreless innings without allowing a hit, the only base runner he allowed was a four-pitch walk to open up the second inning, which he did follow by inducing a double play. He got a strikeout as well. He threw just 21 pitches and allowed only one hard hit ball, and that was on the ground on the double play in those two innings. Because of the 21 pitches, he may have actually gone and thrown some more pitches in the bullpen just to get a higher workload because he was so efficient in the game on Tuesday. And again, you know, he was facing the Tigers, which – Going to this year might be the worst offense in baseball, but they had somewhat close to a big league lineup out there. I mean, he faced six batters, Rodriguez did, in this game, and they were six major leaguers. Now, Orioles fans would argue maybe it was five major leaguers, but he faced Akil Badu, Spencer Torkelson, Javier Baez, Austin Meadows, Miguel Cabrera, and then... Our old friend Tyler Nevin was in the six hole for the Tigers. Now, he got six outs against big league hitters. Tyler Nevin, shout out to him. He did hit a three-run homer later in this game. And his first time obviously doesn't count 
for a lot, but his first time playing against the Orioles since they DFA'd him and then traded him to the Tigers for cash earlier this offseason. So good for him. It did not come off of Grayson Rodriguez. We'll get to later who he hit that homer off of. But he just looked really, really good, and he was out there throwing all his pitches. Again, he didn't get a chance to show off a lot of it because it was 21 pitches, but nine fastballs, six sliders, five changeups, and one curveball on the day for Rodriguez. And, you know, he only got two whiffs. One was on the change, one was on the four-seamer. But the big thing you want to look at is the velocity from Grayson Rodriguez. He averaged 98 miles per hour on the fastball and topped out at 99 among those nine four-seamers that he threw. And remember, that's in his first spring training start when he's still ramping all the way up and he knows he's only going two innings and he threw 99 and was sitting 98. That's up from what we saw from Rodriguez in AAA last year. That's even before the injury. That velo is up from what we saw from Rodriguez, who was more, you know, 96-ish last season, 97. That's pretty good. And then you get to after the game, and I understand, you know, the the pushback of, well, what what else is he going to say? But Rodriguez told the media after the game, he feels like his stuff is better than it was last year. I mean, pre-injury, when he was just filthy and dominating AAA in the first three months of the season, he said his stuff felt better on Thursday than it's ever felt. I feel good about Grayson Rodriguez right now. And the question goes to then, of course, is he going to make this rotation? We've heard from Mike Elias that, you know, Cole Irvin and Kyle Gibson, the two veterans are penciled in. And I talked about Kyle Bradish's amazing first spring training start earlier this week. He's not a lock, but he kind of feels like it. And it just feels like the Orioles would have nudged Dean Kramer away from pitching for Team Israel in the World Baseball Classic if they thought he was more on the bubble to be in the rotation. I think they're pretty confident Kramer's got a rotation spot with how great he was last year and what they think he can be. It really does leave one spot, and I just, you know, this start makes it a little better. It doesn't change things a lot, but I've thought all offseason that that fifth spot in the opening day rotation is going to go to Grayson Rodriguez as long as he is healthy. And Michael Elias has said, you know, he wants Rodriguez in the opening day rotation. If he didn't, he wouldn't say that. I'll tell you that. It just feels like it's going to happen, and he'll probably make his Major League debut. The Orioles' second series of the year is in Texas against the Rangers. He'd get to go back home and and pitch against Texas for his Major League debut. That would be awesome for him. It just feels like it's all building up to Rodriguez in the opening day rotation, and Orioles fans should be excited. It is exciting to see Rodriguez look this good early. We got a while. You know, we still got 27 days until opening day, but great start in spring training for Grayson Rodriguez and not showing any signs of the lat injury that kept him out for three months at the end of last year. But speaking of a back injury, while Grayson Rodriguez has seemingly gotten over one, D.L. Hall is still dealing with one that he felt about a month ago before he reported to spring training. But we did get an update on D.L. Hall's injury as he did throw another bullpen on Thursday. And coming up next, we'll talk about what that update was and what it means for Hall's status as a guy who could make this opening day roster for the Orioles. But first, this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and the calories, well, you got to try a Built Bar. This is the protein bar that's healthy, like a lot are, but this is the protein bar that's actually tasty. I had failed to really find any protein bar that actually tasted good until I got my hands on a Built Bar. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. They got the great flavors like peanut butter brownie and coconut almond, and they're still good for you. It literally tastes like a candy bar, yet it's only 130 calories. It's only four grams of sugar, and there's still 17 grams of protein, a whopping 17 grams of protein in every single bar. So if you love the Built Bars, go get them. If you never had one, go get them. But now it's easier to get one because you can still go to Built.com and order a box of Built Bars and have them sent to your door. But now, for the first time, you can walk into a store and get some Built Bars. They're now in Walmart and Sam's Club. So go into your local Walmart, go into your local Sam's Club, and you can come out with a box of those delicious and nutritious Built Bars. So as Grayson Rodriguez really impressed on Thursday, D.L. Hall threw on Thursday as well, but a little differently as we compare the situations of the Orioles' top two pitching prospects who should both figure as as a big piece of the 2023 Baltimore Orioles. Hall threw his second bullpen 
of spring training on Thursday. His first one was on Monday as his ramp up was a little delayed. You know, he felt that that back tightness about five weeks ago now, and, and that delayed him. Now, Hall is saying he's feeling fine at this point. It's all cleared up. He's good to go. But they just wanted to be safe, obviously, with one of their best prospects. And so because of that, he's a little delayed in the ramp up. Again, he threw for the first time in terms of a full bullpen on Monday. It was only fastballs. Now, on Thursday, he threw a bullpen again. It was once again only fastballs. But the report we got from Brandon Hyde and from D.L. Hall on Thursday is that his next bullpen, which – will most likely come sometime early next week. He is going to mix in the breaking stuff, the slide of the curveball, the change up, and throw his full arsenal in that next bullpen, which means he's getting closer and closer to appearing in games. And according to Hall on Thursday and Brandon Hyde, they are looking at somewhere about two-ish weeks from now, they're going to start getting him into spring training games on the mound. Now, the big piece of news is what Brandon Hyde did say on Thursday. Is that, quote, we're going to build him up, talking about D.L. Hall. We're going to build him up as much as possible and then decide at that point what to do with him. That point being right before opening day when the Orioles go north from Sarasota up to Boston on March 30th. Basically what Hyde was saying and what he did go on to say is that they're not sure D.L. Hall will be built up enough to be a starter by opening day. What we've heard all spring training from the Orioles so far is that they were trying to build Hall up this spring training to be a starting pitcher by opening day. Now, whether that was going to be on the Major League roster or in AAA Norfolk, we were not sure. He did get the one start in the majors last year and then finished the year in the big league bullpen and pitched well out of the pen. But we just don't know at this point. I think one thing we do know, though, is that with them saying they're worried about him being built up as a starter and him not saying he's not, you know, he's not going to get into spring training games for another two weeks. And even when he does that, I'm sure the first outing will just be one inning, then two innings, then try to get him three innings. He's not going to be built up to be ready to start a game, especially not a big league game by opening day. So because of that, and, and even though Hall has said, you know, he feels like he's going to be ready health wise for opening day and that he feels great and he hasn't felt discomfort in over a month in that back. The Orioles have two options right now. Number one is he's healthy by opening day, but as we've talked about, he's not built up to be a starter. So the Orioles put him in the major league bullpen to start the year. He pitches in high leverage roles. He maybe pitches a couple of two inning or three inning stints. He gets some lefties out and they, they try to build him up some in the bullpen. Maybe he gets a couple of spot starts in April or May. And if they still want him to be a starter, they try to build him towards that through the season. But ultimately, he's more of a reliever throughout the year. Now, that option is probably the best thing for the success of the 2023 Orioles. Because Hall is one of the 13 best pitchers in camp right now. So that means when you break camp, if you're trying to win... You should break with your 13 best pitchers, and D.L. Hall is certainly one of them, whether he's a reliever or a starter. Now, he's going to be more valuable as a starter. All starters are more valuable than relief pitchers, but he still helps your team. As he showed at the end of last year, he still helps your team out of the bullpen. So that makes the 2023 Orioles better. Option number two is that D.L. Hall builds up, and again, he's not ready as a starter on opening day. So he gets sent to AAA Norfolk to start the season. They put him in the rotation and they continue to build him up. You know, he makes the first start maybe on Norfolk's opening day and he goes three or four innings. Then the next start, he goes four or five innings and they build up this pitch count, 60, 70, 80, 90. And throughout April and May, they build him all the way up to be a starter. And then at some point in May, the Orioles make the decision of do we have space or do we need a guy in our big league rotation? And can D.L. Hall be that guy? There's still a chance that he gets built up and he starts in AAA for two months. And then the Orioles still call him up as some sort of reliever because they have five starters that are pitching well in the big leagues. But I will say if the Orioles still see D.L. Hall as a starter long term, and I think they do. The going to AAA and being built back up as a starter to start the year. That does... I think more so help the 2024 Orioles and the 2025 Orioles, and the 2026 Orioles, whereas again, starting them in the opening day bullpen is best for the current Orioles. Now, it's basically going to be the Orioles weighing that. And the way I see it, if you look at how the Orioles have taken this offseason, 
a couple of one year deals for veterans, not really spending money, focused more on promoting the prospects, you know, getting them more seasoning at AAA, getting some guys to the big leagues. And the things Mike Elias and John Angelos have said as the offseason has gone on, you know, walking back the liftoff statements and talking about how that, no, it's not just about this year. They're trying to sustain things. And Ken Rosenthal wrote an Orioles column in The Athletic on Thursday where, you know, he had quotes from Mike Elias, among others, talking about, you know, they're trying to build a sustained winner and they're not, you know, fully focusing on winning in, in just 2023. They're looking to build it up where they can at some point be in it every single year for a decade or more and, and continue to have good teams. All of those quotes tell me that if the Orioles have a choice for one of their top prospects, you know, a top five guy and a top 100 prospect in DL Hall, if they have the choice between something being better for the 2023 Orioles and then question marks beyond that potentially – or something being better for the 2024, 25, and 26 Orioles, everything they've showed me and told me this offseason tells me they're going to go with the option that benefits the 2024 and beyond Orioles, which is why, as I've talked about earlier this week on the pod, before we even got this DL Hall news on Thursday that they didn't think he'd be built up as a starter by opening day, it's why I've continued to say over the last week or so that I've changed my opinion, and I don't think he'll be on the Orioles opening day roster. And this news on Thursday, I think cements that for me even more. I think they're going to take that long road. I think they're going to put him in AAA, put him in the rotation, continue to build him up through April and May. And then we get to late May and we'll see what the O's want to do with him. I would rather them just go north with their 13 best pitchers that includes DL Hall and put him in the bullpen and use him in different spots and get him some starts if they can. Maybe, you know, piggyback him with Grayson Rodriguez, even potentially early in the year, that could work. I'd rather them do that My prediction at this point, though, would be he's going to go to AAA again for a bit. I don't think he has anything more to learn in AAA. I get you'd want to build him up more if he's not ready, but I just don't think he's going to benefit from throwing any more AAA pitches. He's done that enough last year, but I think that's what's going to happen. But there were a few more news and notes I wanted to get to before we finish off the pod here for the day and for the week. A couple more Orioles pitchers who appeared in some spring training games this week and one Orioles minor league hitter who actually has had some solid numbers at times, but decided to call it a career this week. We'll talk about all that coming up next. But first, this episode of the Locked on Orioles podcast is also brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet, up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back If your first bet doesn't win, just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, and it's super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and to threes drain. And for me, whatever the player prop is on Damian Lillard at this point, give me the over. And I, you know, probably especially because he dropped 71 the other night, but just give me the over on Lillard. And plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So as we finish up today's episode here on a Friday, I just want to touch on a couple more pitchers who we saw appear in spring training games this week. Obviously, hitting a lot on Grayson Rodriguez and D.L. Hall, the two top prospects. But as we continue to talk pitching and especially, you know, starting pitching options for the Orioles, who's going to be in the rotation and those 12 pitchers that Elias mentioned are competing for the five rotation spots. Probably the guy that I've mentioned the least out of those 12 so far this spring training on the podcast is Spencer Watkins. And it's kind of unfair to Spencer Watkins because he's been in the big leagues for two years with the Orioles. And yeah, he wasn't very good in 2021. But Spencer Watkins just was one of the biggest positive surprises for the 2022 Baltimore Orioles. The stuff got better. And for what he had been in his career, a career minor leaguer, he comes to the O's 30 years old, and he's just a really solid number five starter for a long stretch of last season. Now, it did get ugly in September, and the O's did have to demote him to AAA early that month. But before that, Watkins was fairly reliable at some times for the Orioles, and I feel like I and other people are kind of brushing him aside in this rotation conversation. And I get it. The reason why I'm doing it is just 
he doesn't have the highest upside. I mean, you could argue Watkins has the lowest upside of those 12 starting pitchers we're talking about. Now, that doesn't mean he's not solid, and that doesn't mean he'll, he won't provide great depth in the AAA rotation this year. But I just don't know if it's in the cards that the O's rotation gets better and better. And, you know, they did add Irvin and Gibson to it, and now they're going to have Grayson Rodriguez as well, and maybe D.L. Hall is an option. It's just going to be tough for Watkins to get a lot of starts this year. But he did pitch in the game Thursday after Grayson Rodriguez came out, and he just looked basically just as good. A perfect two innings for Watkins, six up, six down, with a couple of strikeouts. Like Rodriguez, he only threw 21 pitches. And, you know, Watts, Watkins mixed it all in, eight cutters, five four-seamers, five sliders, a sinker, a curveball, a changeup. He threw it all at you. That's what Spencer Watkins does. It's the kitchen sink approach. But what was really interesting is, you know, Spencer Watkins had a velocity jump at the beginning of 2022. Then remember, he took that line drive off the wrist, missed a, a couple of months and came back last year and, and came back pitching well. But the velocity kind of settled back closer to what it was in 2021. Well, he's got a velocity bump again, and most of his pitches were about two miles per hour harder than he threw them in 2022 in the 21 pitches that he threw on Thursday in the spring training game against the Tigers. The big jump came from the slider. It was at 78 last year. He was throwing it at 81 in this game. Another big jump from the cutter, which he threw at 87 last year. That pitch was 89 to 90. In the game on Thursday, the four-seamer was up from about 91 to 93 as well. It's interesting from Watkins because he's a big driveline guy, has worked out there for the past two off-seasons, and driveline helped him with the velocity boost last year, and then I think the injury took it back a bit. And it seems like all that work at driveline this off-season did the same thing, bumped his velocity on basically all of his pitches, bumped up the spin rates as well. And it's something interesting to watch because – it's going to be tough for Watkins to win not just a rotation job, but an opening day spot on this team. Because not only is he behind the eight ball for the rotation, in terms of starters who the Orioles would put in the opening day bullpen, you know, D.L. Hall's ahead of him. He's been a reliever before and a good one. Tyler Wells is ahead of him. He was a good reliever all of 2021. Austin Voth is ahead of him. He's had experience relieving for the Orioles and been solid with that as well. Mike Bauman is ahead of him. You know, he's pitched out of the bullpen many a time for the Orioles over the past two years. When Watkins is pitched out of the bullpen, it's really just been in a mop-up role a few times over the last few seasons. He's not as much built to be, you know, a good reliever if he can't make the rotation. So that is why I feel like he's destined for the AAA rotation, but just wanted to shout him out for, you know, a velo bump and, and really looking good on Thursday. Now, another guy who looked good is Andrew Politti, the rule five pick, you know, especially with Dylan Tate out is trying to force his way into an opening day spot. You know, the O's want to keep him. And it was another scoreless inning for Politti on Thursday. Now it was against mostly some backups for the Tigers, but he did give up a hit, but he had two strikeouts in the game. And, you know, you're just starting to, to see the stuff. It was, Cutter, curveball, four-seamer. It was a really interesting combination. He threw 20 pitches, nine cutters, six curveballs, and five four-seam fastballs on the day. He got four whiffs on 20 pitches, including three on a cutter, which was kind of interesting because I think it was a slider. StatCast had it about 86 to 88 at times. It was a hard slider or a soft cutter. The curveball was kind of 81, 82. And then the four-seamer, he was 93, 94 on the day with that pitch. But it seemed like an interesting mix and, and another good inning for Andrew Politti. But on the flip side, another disaster for Joey Crable, who started off his spring on Tuesday, giving up three runs before he recorded an out. It got much, much worse on Thursday. Crable comes in in the fifth inning and couldn't even finish the inning. Nolan Hoffman, the side armor, had to come in and finish his inning for him. Crable goes two-thirds of an inning, allowing five runs on five hits with a strikeout, no walks, and two more home runs allowed after he allowed two homers in his appearance back on Tuesday. Now, again, I said this on Twitter on Thursday. I don't want to too strongly react to early spring training outings. But when you're Joey Crable and you spent most of last year in the Orioles bullpen and there wasn't looking like there was going to be a spot for you, but then Dylan Tate got injured. And because the O's know who you are, you probably have more of an inside track to maybe win that final bullpen spot. And you give up approximately a billion runs in your first two outings while giving up four spring training homers. 
that is not going to bode well for Joey Crable. I mean, I don't want to overreact too much, but he's putting himself well behind the eight ball because guys like Politi and others are pitching so much better. And here's the other concerning part. The fastball velocity, way down for Joey Crable. He threw 33 pitches, 14 of them were four-seam fastballs on Thursday. His average fastball was 94.4 miles per hour last year. He was sitting at 92. His average fastball was 92 on Thursday. And his hardest thrown fastball was 93. Still a mile per hour less than his average from last year. That concerns me a little bit that there could be injury here for Crable as well, but just something to watch because a bad, bad start for him. And then just wanted to finish off by shouting out Andrew Doshbach, the Orioles 11th round pick out of Stanford back in 2019, part of the first Michael Elias draft. And, you know, he put up some interesting numbers in the minor leagues, was a solid power hitter for a while, but Doshbach has decided to retire Andrew Doshbach at 25 years old, stepping away from the game of professional baseball. He was in Bowie all of last year, played 103 games for the Bay Sox, but just did not hit well. Just a 191 average with a 328 on base, 362 slugging. He did have 15 homers after hitting 16 bombs in 2021. Always showed the power, but the strikeouts were a nightmare. 165 Ks in 103 games last year for Doshbach, who was really one of the only kind of first base prospects in the system, but uh, we wish him luck in anything he uh, has going for him past his professional baseball career and, and thank him for his time in the Orioles organization. But that'll do it for this one. We thank you so much for listening and watching all week. Remember to subscribe to the Locked on Orioles podcast on YouTube. Leave a comment in the comment section here on YouTube about your favorite thing about spring training. And again, you can win the Orioles Hawaiian shirt. I'll do the drawing this weekend. The contest closes tonight at midnight. And on Monday's episode, make sure to join me back here and we'll talk all things Orioles. And I will reveal the winner of the never before worn Orioles Hawaiian shirt. But that's all coming up on Monday's episode when I return. Until then, I'm Connor Newcomb, and this has been the Locked On Orioles Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.